Today I am going to show you how I built this functional and unique bridge for free using only materials found within a couple hundred feet of where we were building this bridge. I am replacing this old bridge that finally broke and we'll talk about some lessons that were learned about the choice of materials used as well as perfecting the overall design of the bridge. Stick around until the end and get 48 hours of good luck. Before we begin, let's put safety in the forefront with a few quick safety tips. This is a depiction of a project that I performed on my own trail. I am not responsible for anyone injured while trying this at home. If you do try this at home, use extreme caution and appropriate personal protective equipment. Consider subscribing if you are new to this channel and click the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Place any questions, comments, or compliments in the comments section. And now for our feature presentation. In some of my past videos, I talked about the trail project that I designed and built by myself. I named this project the Buckwheat Ridge Trail System, built on the land where I grew up on, or at least got older on. They are private trails built on private property. You've probably seen this bridge a time or two in some of my other videos. <laughs> I think that's the end of that bridge. Bikes have crossed this bridge hundreds of times, till one day. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> here, here goes nothing. Oh, that's like a brand new bridge again. Doors <laughs> and some ladder rungs. Oh man, there it goes. <laughs> Did the other log go? Yep. I'm glad I caught that on camera. <laughs> oh, I guess nothing lasts forever. So when I made this bridge about three years ago, I never really expected it to even last as long as it did. It was only a way to cross this ravine until the trail was complete, and later I would build something a little less sketchy. I also bought my Rogue Hoe. If you do any trail building, this tool is a workhorse. It is probably the best thing aside from an excavator for digging shelves and benches on hillsides. It comes in many variations, but I prefer this one because it has a narrow cutting edge on the opposite side so you can penetrate thick roots. I've been using a rogue hoe for several years now. These are a hell of a tool. I mean, they're made out of really tough material. Um, this is actually a disc harrow from a farm. Almost everyone who ever rode this trail had stopped to take a picture of this bridge. And as far as I know, I am the inventor of this style of bridge. There are no fasteners in it. Everything is just held together with gravity and a little bit of quantum physics. <laughs> what is quantum physics, you ask? Put simply, quantum physics or quantum mechanics is the best description that we have of the nature of particles that make up the matter and the forces in which they interact. It underlies how atoms work and why chemistry and biology work as they do. So how can we fix this crossing? I could purchase about 30 or so dollars worth of lumber, but who has that kind of money? This bridge is not very far into the woods, but imagine if it was miles away from any road. I would hate to have to carry the tools, lumber, and hardware to the construction site. What if we just made it from stuff nearby? There are plenty of dead trees in this woods, and many of them are locust trees. A lot of farmers use locusts for fence posts because they are very resistant to rot. So I'm going to make the main beams of this bridge out of locust. So let's go look for some nice straight dead locust trees. Boy, that log doesn't look too bad. Locusts. pretty solid. So after measuring, I'm going to make them about 13 and a half feet long and make the bridge span a little further up the bank of the ravine that we are crossing. The land around here is full of these ravines. I am not sure if they were made from erosion or mining subsidence, but there is a lot of them in this woods, and mining was big in this area. I found this beautiful uprooted dead locust tree lying on the ground which will make one of the 13 and a half foot beams. I just put a new chain on the Black & Decker 40 volt chainsaw, so let's see how it does. Dried dead locust is one of the hardest things that you can cut with a chainsaw. Sparks have been known to fly off the chain when people cut this. It's going to be on a little bit of a bind. It's going to pinch the saw if I don't. And the saw seemed to do pretty well. 
To move this log down the trail, I'm going to tie a timber hitch with this piece of rope. That's the timber hitch. You're gonna sink your rope under the log. Maybe, I don't know, two or three feet down. You're gonna tie a square knot. You can tie a slip knot or whatever. The strength of this knot really doesn't matter. But we're gonna do a square knot. We're talking to an Eagle Scout here, so. Um, now, you just want to flip, <laughs> flip the rope over so that your long end is on the square knot side and just pull it up over the log. Here's your timber hitch. Makes life a little easier when you're dragging lumber out of the woods. turn, most of the force is going to be on the lower one. I'm just going to place the main beams beside the old bridge for now. And now it's time to dismantle the old bridge. As I said earlier, there are no fasteners in this design, so disassembly is a snap. I might be able to even reuse some of these. They're really solid and they're nice and rough. So if we lay this right, we should be able to actually use I'm not going to carry him away too far. I'm going to install the new beams about 25 inches on center and dig them into the bank using my rogue hoe. If I made this out of wood, I'd feel compelled to use a level on it. But this is such backwoods engineering. Need no stinking levels. We're gonna grab our rogue hoe. I'm gonna move this out of the way for the moment. We're gonna have to dig a little trough for that to sit in. So right here is where we want the trail to come in. And I must put that right on my camera remote. We're going to get the one set in and then we're going to make the other one match. I'm just going to half ass fill this in. So it takes away the shakiness. I'm telling you, if you don't have one of these rogue hoes, you need to get one. And let's see how it looks. Once we're happy with the spacing, levelness, and parallelism of the beams, we are ready to cut some floor pieces. I'm going to use some of the ones from the old bridge and cut some deadfall up to make new ones. We want to remove as much bark as we can because the bark holds moisture which leads to rot. It should fall off on its own as it rots enough. The less bark you have, the longer these are going to last out here because the bark holds moisture against the log. But I'm not going to sit here all day picking it off either. I mean, just being up in the air actually lets air circulate around it and it's going to last a few years. Being that the floor pieces are three feet long, 
I'm going to cut pieces in multiples of three, tie them together with a timber hitch, and skid them down to the work site where I will make the final cuts. I'm guessing I'm going to hit that other camera. <laughs> Was that close or what? Okay, so now we're going to cut our three foot pieces and start placing them on the bridge. I am amazed at how this saw is going through locusts. These are considerably heavier logs, so they shouldn't shift around as much as the old ones did. tapered end here I need to get off. <laughs> I said get off. <coughs> All right, you can see that's a little rotten on the end. But the way the weight's distributed, it's all right. This is why we call it a sketchy bridge. Okay, three foot, here we go. I think we'd get the gap closed tonight, but I think we're going to. If I quit bullshit, we'll get it done. It's coming up on 8 o'clock, which I've only been on this maybe three hours. For one guy, it's not too bad. This type of bridge can only be used where two banks slope down to the bridge because banks are what keeps the logs from shifting when you ride onto it and gravity keeps them from levitating. Why we call it sketch. Two more. We'll have it. Okay, so two more pieces. One, two. We jam these babies in. <laughs> All right. How do you like that? How do you like that? We can ride over this thing all day. All right, and here we go. Not too bad. I mean, considering that there's not a fastener in it, gravity holds it together. I mean, check it out. A little bit of bounce in the middle, but when you're on a bike, 
it, there's no way that your bike is going to go through this. So we got a couple more years of good riding on this. It's going to be so good. This bridge is a pretty simple design. It is built without a level or fasteners and did not cost a dime to build. Using locust for the main beams as well as many of the floor pieces, it should last several years, as this is considerably better than our old bridge. it's a success. Much stronger, more rot resistant, and less sketchier than the old bridge was. You know how much I love your comments, so enter them below. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up? Maybe consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. Thanks for doing quantum physics with me, and I'll see you next time.